integration. I have a long neuro background. Maybe 30 years ago, I was a neurological nurse. So I started in medicine, and I'm now in holistic medicine. So it's been a bit of a journey for me. I'm here today to talk about kinesiology, but first off, who's heard of kinesiology before? Hands up. Nice. Hands up who's had kinesiology before. So quite a few. And I think you may have noticed kinesiology is growing quite fast, especially here in WA. We have the strongest college for kinesiology in the country. So we're very fortunate to have some of the most advanced kinesiologists available for us. Go WA. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So first off, my journey. I started in Melbourne. I was a neurological nurse. I went overseas for 20 years. When I came back to Australia, I ended up in Perth, which I'd never been to. So it was a bit foreign to me. But the problem was that my previous job didn't even exist here. So what I'd been doing for the last 20 years didn't happen to me here in Australia. So I had to work out what my new career would be. And that took a while, because I didn't know where I was going with my career and what I should do. So I was questioning it, I was asking people, I was Googling. I was doing all sorts of things. And in the end, I pulled out a piece of paper and a pen. And I drew a line. And I wrote pros and cons, likes and dislikes positives and negatives, back to the pencil and paper. And through that journey, that's how I worked out what my new career should look like. So if you, anybody here is struggling on their own journey, just grab a piece of paper and <coughs> spend a bit of time with yourself working out what it is you want, but also, most importantly, what don't you want in your life? And that was the secret for me. And then I found this college about this Kinesi something or another, I couldn't pronounce it, and that's why I put it on my site. <laughs> because the most, or well, the questions I get most for kinesiology is, after they ask how to pronounce it, is what is it? And it is an important question. Kinesiology is a mixture of East meets West. So we take the psychology, the anatomy, the physiology from the Western science, and we mix it with healing practices, holistic healing practices from the East and we marry them together. We pretty much cherry pick the best of both. We also cherry pick some from the chiropractors. They use biofeedback, and that's where they align perhaps a person. They'll then use the muscles to see if they're balanced or running as they should be. We took that biofeedback and we use it as communication. So we extend it on it. So with this biofeedback, I can ask your body, where is the imbalance? But I can also ask your body, which is the best way to fix what's going on. So I facilitate positive change in people who are struggling with the difficulties of living. But I let their body do the talking. And that's why with kinesiology we get amazing results. We work in the physical body, we work in the spiritual, we work in the mental, because we're using the body to do the healing. At the end of this, I'll do a demonstration. And I'll ask for a volunteer from the audience. And I'm going to be specific today because of the technique I'm doing. And I'll try to explain it this way, why I'll be picking a certain person. With kinesiology, with medicine, with Western medicine, we have circulation. We have blood moves through the heart, by the arteries, the veins, and that's a circulatory system. Everybody knows if they cut, they will bleed. We also have the lymphatic system. So the lymph nodes will help push the lymphatic fluid around your body. And then you have lymphatic system running through your body. So again, if you can't, it gets infected, there's your lymphatic system. But in Eastern medicine, we also have the energetic body. We have energy running via meridians, via the active points, going around the whole of the body. The difference is if I cut, you can't see the energy. If we could imagine that we're at a birthday party, everybody just imagine you're singing happy birthday. You can feel that energy. You can feel the happiness in the room. Now imagine you're at a funeral. It's a completely different energy. I can't draw that, I can't picture it, I can't hand it to you, but I think you know what I'm talking about. There's a difference in energy even if we can't see it, or even if you were brought up in Melbourne in a hospital that didn't teach energy. I've learned over the years that it does exist. It's taken me a couple, you know, a long time to catch up, where people from cultures who grew up in energetic medicine, or the East, China, India, they all work in energetic medicine. So as Western as we're catching on, it's just taken us a little bit longer. Mm. Ah, let's see, me, kinesiology, 
And there's one technique I'll be doing today, and it's an aura alignment, or a chi alignment, an energy alignment. So this is where sometimes people can have their energy knocked out of place. They can be caused from an accident, a hard thumb, a big trauma in your life, or an operation. You see, surgeons work in the physical body. For example, in Western Australia, we do have a, a high rate of caesarean section. It's just because of what, how Western Australia is. And when they cut across a woman, they'll take bubs out, the surgeon will sew her back up. The circulation's working, the lymphatic system's working, but they don't understand energy. And they've actually cut across one of the major meridians, and that's the central meridian, as well as some other meridians. <coughs> so you often hear about women saying, after my baby, after the caesarean, I actually didn't feel the same again. Things had changed. So the very first thing that I look for when I'm working in kinesiology with somebody, I ask them, have you had an accident? Have you had an operation? Have you had something that was such a trauma in your life that it knocked the energy out of you? And then I use that procedure to put their energy back in. And you can measure, you can see where their energy is. Is it down in their boots? Is it up here? Is it over to the side? And then we can just easily put it back into where it should be. Very simple technique. It took me four years to learn, but it's a simple <laughs> technique now. But this is the thing I do most. With all new clients or new patients, I check their energy. Once your energy is back to where it should be, it's an aura. It sits around your body. It should be nice and even. It takes a big event for it to fall back out. It doesn't just slip out tomorrow. So that's what I'll be doing later on. So when I ask for a volunteer, I'm actually going to ask for somebody who's perhaps had an operation or an accident or a big event because they'll be able to get more out of this than people who are perhaps well balanced. <laughs> I'm getting people pointing at different people now. <laughs> you can put your hand up at the end. <laughs> okay, let's see, where's my notes? Make sure I don't go over. My research study. Now, I was involved in a research study, and the question for our study was, does kinesiology increase the well-being in women? So it's an interesting question. I knew kinesiology would increase the well-being, but I had to work out how do I measure that? And how do I prove that in a scientific model? So I gathered a group of women, and it was various ages from 18 to 75. So I had the women, they were all happy to participate. And I found a personal well-being mm -hmm. index. It was designed by Deakin University right here in Australia. It's been used for the last 20 years all around the world. It's used by WHO organisation, professors, researchers worldwide to measure people's well-being. And it's not just, am I having a good hair day or am I having a bad day? It's actually questions about, how is my life in general? Do I feel safe? Do I feel secure? And what it does, it, after a series of questions, it calculates a number out of 100. The average in Australia is 75 or 76 out of 100. That's the average for Australia. You might hear on the radio, they'll say comments like, Melbourne's the second most livable city in the world. That's what they use to come up with those statistics. So I knew that was going to be a good way to measure people's well-being. So I gathered my ladies. I got them to fill in this short quiz, which everybody can do. You can actually do it online. Insurance companies use it, so everybody can join in. Ask me at the end if you want the link for that. And I gathered my ladies. They filled in their scores, and we correlated the scores I found that there was a variety of scores. Some people had 80s and 90s even. They were very happy with their life. Some people were in the general, most people were in the general, in the middle, the 50s, 60s and 70s. And then I had a couple that were in the 30s and one even lower than that. After this, we did seven sessions of kinesiology. These sessions were all on chakras. I was balancing their chakras. And not just was the chakra, chakra healthy today or happy, I was balancing every aspect of their chakras. So it was very thorough. And I couldn't move on to the next chakra until the previous one was complete. And the body would tell me when that would happen. It took seven sessions for everybody. Throughout the study, I started to see some little anecdotes, little patterns emerging. After the third session, and most people were up to the third chakra then, when they returned for the fourth <coughs> session, they were making comments and everybody said exactly the same words to me at that stage. They said, I'm coping. 
or I'm managing with life. And I felt that was quite a big thing to say, to feel in yourself, to notice. And the fact that everybody in my study said exactly the same thing at the same time. Gave me an understanding of what the chakras were doing and how they, we use them in our life. So by the end of the seven sessions, everybody had completed all chakras. They'd all been balanced. And we did the scores again. Now I knew I was going to get progression. I knew it would be positive. But I didn't know what I would get. Not to the standard we definitely got. I had the girls in the 80s and 90s. They were now five or six points higher. And that was huge because the Australian average of 75, 76, it changes one or two percent or one or two degrees each year. So it really doesn't change very much. So to get five or six out of these happy ladies, as I call them, that was a magnificent result. Now the people in the middle, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, they all moved up 10 or 20 points. So that was humongous. You see, before the study, when I looked at the whole group, they were just a little bit under the average of Australia. When I finished the study, I realised they were well above the average of Australia. So huge results collectively. The woman who was in her 30s, she, her scores turned up to a 68. I had one girl. She was the youngest girl in the group, she was 18. And her score was 11 out of 100. And I think you can work out, she was clinically depressed. That wasn't hard to work out. She was 18, and for eight years she'd been self-harming. She'd been cutting. That was her way to deal with emotion. She didn't know how to have emotion, so she cut. And that's how she felt emotion. But see, she was 18, and this had been happening for eight years, almost half her life. This was her normal. She didn't know how to have emotion, so when she was on the table, I would just say, just think of it because she couldn't verbalise something she didn't understand. The end of the study, her result went from 11 to 85. And that was just magnificent. Now I was over the moon for her. She felt brilliant. She didn't cut after that. And I asked her, whenever you need me, I'm here. My door's always open. Please return. About two months after when she texted, because she's 18, they only text, okay? <laughs> she's texted me and she said, Sally, I need to come and see you, I've just lost my job. And I said, sure, of course. And she said, I'm having problems with the boyfriend. Now I remember as an 18 year old, <laughs> boyfriend problems was devastating. So you can imagine when I was starting to get worried, how she would be. It took her two days to come back to me because she was working in the country. She arrived on my doorstep, she sat down, and then she started to tell me how she'd lost her job. She'd broken up with the boyfriend that night. And then she said, but I'm fine, because the next day I went and got another job with some friends. And those friends have actually made a plan, and we're all going backpacking. And we're going to save for three months, and we're going overseas. And I was over the moon. Because not only was she actually living and thriving, she was flourishing. <laughs> she was actually doing exactly what 18-year-olds should be doing, backpacking in Europe. And I saw her before she left. She hadn't cut the whole time. She's now overseas and backpacking and who knows what she's up to now. But I was amazed to see how well the results with kinesiology can be. I knew it would help, but I didn't know how well it would help. So now I'm going to ask if anybody would like to volunteer for a, a quick short session of kinesiology as I bring the table.